contributed to the process and they have a lot involved in the selection of our coach. And I believe we've selected a coach that's very student athlete oriented and that's one of the priorities that we look for because our young men that play here are student athletes. We're also very impressed with the gentleman that we've selected because he has a lot of great ideas, a great experience, and a real commitment to community involvement and fan involvement. And we all know how important that is. We put good players on the floor, we need fans in the stand to support them and be involved. So those of you that are here and been active followers of our program and those that you know, we ask you to continue to be involved, join our Hardwood Club, support our new coach, come to the ball games, bring friends, and as Coach Kennedy used to say, let's create a home court advantage that everybody will know and feel when they come to the home of the Lions. Now let me tell you about our new coach, because we're very excited about this gentleman and what he's going to do for our program. We've had some great success. We want to build on that, and we think we've selected a man that will do that. The next head coach of the Southeastern Louisiana University men's basketball program is Jim Yarborough. His most recent experience has been as head coach at Valdosta State University in Georgia, Valdosta, Georgia. In five years as a head coach, he's won over 70% of his games, compiling a 97-42 and 42 record. In those five years, his teams won 20 or more games twice and had 18 wins in four of his five seasons. He was a two-time National Association of Basketball Coaches Regional Coach of the Year and was Gulf South Coach of the Year. He led Valdosta State University to its first ever Gulf South East Division title. He led them to two NCAA Division II national appearances, including the Blazers' first Sweet 16 appearance in 2001-2002. This is something we're very familiar with at Southeastern, and we think he'll continue it. At Valdosta, they led the nation in scoring defense and finished the season ranked third nationally in the 2003-2004 year. I mentioned student athletes a moment ago. In his five years as head coach, they graduated over 80% of the student athletes participating in their basketball program. That's very important to us. He has national postseason tournament experience on seven different occasions, both at Valdosta State and also at the College of Charleston, both in the NIT tournament and the NCAA tournament. He's married. His wife, Glenda, could not be with us today, and her two children, Samantha and Jack. But I can tell you I am extremely excited, very pleased to introduce to you the next Southeastern Louisiana University men's basketball coach, Coach Jim Yarborough. I'm delighted all of you are here. Uh, it's a very special day for me, and it's exciting. And uh, if we get this kind of support on a regular basis, which I feel we will, it'll be a very uh, enjoyable time for all of us. Uh, I want to thank Frank first for taking time out uh, and uh, letting me go through this process and this opportunity. But really, Dr. Moffitt, uh, appreciate your trust and the privilege to lead this program in the years ahead. Uh, also, I think it would be remiss if I did not take time out to thank Coach Billy Kennedy and his great staff to date uh, for establishing a tremendous foundation. I think we should take a time out to, to give him a round of applause and thank him. Great candidates for this particular position. I plan on meeting with the uh, current assistant coaches about their place. Uh, obviously, someone like Roman Banks figures very prominently in my plans. I think one of the great attractions to southeastern Louisiana, obviously, is that there's a formula in place that's been successful, and we want to tap into that, marry what we do, kind of incorporate our visions, and continue that path. So that's very, very important to me, and I think it's important to say that right up front. Um, I also need to take time out because I couldn't be here. I have a few friends that uh, were able to make it, and I appreciate them being here. With the quick turnaround time, you know, my family and friends, some of them couldn't be here for this particular press conference. My wife, Glenda, uh, my daughter, Samantha, my son, Jack, they are just a great part of my life, very, very important. Hopefully all of you will get to meet them in the near future. Um, uh, my parents and my in-laws, who are very, very special to me as well. So I kind of mentioned them because I know they're with me in spirit, and that's very, very important. This press conference to me is defined by a question that Terry Bryant asked me during the interview process. He was concerned, as he should be, about the direction we would go with a new coach. Does he bring in new players and how do they fit in and how do the old guys and the returnees fit in? And after giving him kind of a multi-level answer, I said, you know, Terry, we're a family. And I think that's a great theme for us today. Um, I really appreciate you all welcoming me and my family to yours, to this community. We plan on being very invested in it. It's important for us to, to be that way. 
Um, we want to create a family environment where you all feel like you have access to what we do, that you're a part of what we do. Uh, we're very open. Our student athletes will be in the community and sharing time with you all in a variety of ways. And uh, we want you to participate. So family is very, very big. And we will be a family, my second family. I spend as much or more time with these guys during the winter than I do my own. And that's, uh, that's part of it. And so that's a theme that I want to establish from day one. And that will be very prominent for us as we move ahead. Um, I also think it's important to mention this is bittersweet. An unbelievably exciting day for me. It's just an opportunity that I've been thinking about probably all my life. Uh, Valdosta State gave me a tremendous opportunity. Um, I need to thank them for that. Um, we had a great five-year run, really tremendous. And there are a lot of great young guys that I've been on the phone with over the last 15 hours or so that you know, are in the same position that some of the players here have been in in the last weeks. It's a bit of flux. Um, they'll be in good hands, and I know they'll do well. Uh, but uh, I'm leaving some good folks. But I also realize that I'm going to a great place as well. So it's very exciting, and I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, we will roll up our sleeves and get to work right away. There's a lot to be done. So I'm, I'm excited about that. Southeastern Louisiana, to me, has been in the process very recently in establishing a brand name. And what we want to do starting today is continue that process whether the reputation be as giant killers where people don't want to play southeastern Louisiana or you know we continue the success we've had in the Southland Conference and people fear coming into our arena on a regular basis our defense makes people crack whatever the reputation might be our identity we want to continue that and we want to continue to increase that household name recognition not only in our read our community and our region but hopefully nationally as well and uh, I think that southeastern Louisiana, with all that's here, the support, the facilities, the dynamic university will give us that opportunity. And I think where this opportunity and our hard work come together, it'll be a very, uh, a very electric run. And I feel a lot of electricity in the room right now, so I'm excited about getting started. Um, what you'll see from me, essentially, uh, won't be a whole lot different probably than you see uh, fr from the last couple of years. Certainly I'm, I may be different in personality, but we're going to be a tough, hard-nosed team that plays together. We're going to understand what a good shot is. I believe that a program that's organized, that builds relationships with people and that has a lot of energy is going to be one that's very, very successful. So I'm going to follow the old adage that's always been successful, be brief and be seated. Um, so I'm going to go along with that and, and, and not to overstep my bounds, but I appreciate you all welcoming me today. I look forward to meeting each and every one of you, eventually getting my family here to join me. Kind of started a whirlwind here, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it and uh, going to meet with the players a little bit later today. If there are any questions in the crowd, uh, I will be happy to field them. would love to do that. So if anybody, um, I would be shocked if Dick doesn't have a question or two for me, but perhaps he will. <laughs> Um, but it's been a great process, very quick process, but it's been very enjoyable and it's wonderful to be here today. So thanks for coming. Any questions? Do you have a special presentation? Coach, I, I think Valdosta State's colors are black and red. Yes. There are many colors we don't like. Black and red are at the top of that list <laughs> uh, because I think that's the colors of Nichols State. Now, we love our friends at Nichols State. We just don't like to lose to them competitively. But more importantly, we happen to like the colors green and gold. And so as our first token of appreciation and support for you becoming part of our program, green and gold. Very good. Thank you. This was one of the more difficult searches that we've done since I've been here. Not difficult from, uh, difficult because we had our large number of very good applicants and uh, so you know pairing the group down to three was a very difficult process and then picking one <laughs> was a very difficult decision as well and uh, you know the unfortunate part of hiring somebody is you get to meet a lot of good people and you you kind of develop relationships with them and at the end of the day you're only going to hire one person because you, you only have one job so uh, but we think we made the right decision uh, you know, Coach Yarborough brings a, a lot of the things that we were looking for. His, his strong background in defense, his, his very successful record at Valdosta, his, his experience in, in, in postseason competition. Uh, you know, those are all the things that we want to continue in our program.
I think our goal right now uh, is to have a program that is consistently in the top four in the league. And, and we think we're there. You know, new, regardless of new coach, regardless of Nate Lofton leaving, whatever. And if you get to that point and you stay healthy, you know, you, you're always, you always have an opportunity to, to compete for the championship or to compete for the conference tournament championship. But you're in the running. And, and that's, that's the level of consistency that we want to establish. You know, obviously, we've, um, you know, we've had two 21-win 20 20 win seasons in a row. And you know, the way to top that is to keep doing it. But at the same time, um, you know, you got to stay healthy. You got to have some breaks go your way. But if, if if we're consistently in the top four, that's that's the kind of mark that we're looking for. And maybe you repeat, maybe you don't. I, I, I mean, that's hard to predict. But but I, I know these players here. When you talk to guys like Terry Bryant and Ricky Woods and Leonard Harden, these guys here want to go back to the NCAA tournament and win a game. So I, I wouldn't sell them short. Our, our, our attendance has been on the upswing for the last three years, and I would hope that would continue to be the case. Uh, uh, you know, I think Coach Yarbrough is, uh, is certainly going to have to get out into the community, which he will, and, and you know, get, allow the, our fans and our friends and our alumni to get to know him, which he will, and, and you know, we're going to have a good team. So I think all that stuff is going to continue to grow and improve. You know, one of the things that's very important to us when you're making a hire, and it's the hardest thing to judge, is is, is this person going to fit into your community? Is it, going to, is it going to fit into the basketball program? Is he going to fit into the athletic department? Is he going to fit into the university? And then is he going to fit into the community? And I, and I think our, our feelings on all those are yes in a very positive way. I don't see that happening in this coming year. It depends what your definition of big Division One schools would be. But uh, in a lot of ways, when you have a successful program, it makes it harder to schedule those kind of games because they don't want to take the chance on getting beat. And if they come to your court, they're taking a chance. Well, next season, we look pretty good. I mean, we still have pretty much the core of the team still here. And myself will be taking over the middle spot. You know, a couple games I had to fill in for Nate when he was in foul trouble. You know, it's just, you know, sometimes you got to wait your turn and, and succeed to the other guy, you know. But other than that, as far as the team aspect, we're pretty good, I think. We are going to go do the same thing we did the past two years. I mean, I don't think we'll miss a beat. I can't really say because I, I don't know Coach Y'all, bro. I don't, I, don't know, I don't know his track record. I only heard what was said today in the uh, press conference or whatever. But I really don't know him, so I can't really come in on his side. But as far as Coach Kenny's side, I mean, hopefully it continues that way. And hopefully it's, you know, it moves as smooth as Coach Kennedy's reign went. But... You never know sometimes with new coaches, a lot of things, you know, signals may get crossed with players, you know, he's filling us out, we're filling him out, he's trying to learn the, the surrounding area and things of that nature. I really, I really, I really can't say right now, but ask me around November, after we done conditioning and, and start getting plays that coach want us to run and then I'll pre pretty much have a prediction for you. We had, a, we had a large pool and a very deep pool in terms of the quality of the applicants. I think it was one of our more difficult decisions in terms of choosing a coach, uh, but I think we've chosen a good coach, uh, right skills, right combination. Obviously, we didn't want to lose Coach Kennedy, but he had a great opportunity. So, uh, but I think what he did created interest in our program and gave us that quality of pool to pick from. Well, I think we're going to have a really good year. I was just talking to a couple of the players, and, and they believe and, and know in their hearts they can win. They've proven that. So the players that are coming back, we've signed some excellent players to come in. Uh, one of the things that we found out in the interview is a couple of the players we've signed, everybody wanted. So we're very confident about our pool. The transition in terms of style is going to be uh, minimal because the same kind of ball is going to be played. And so I think we're ready to compete again for the Southland Conference Championship. That's our plans. That's our goal. Well, I think winning always makes a difference. If you win in any sport, fans will uh, come out. So we've got that base built and the excitement. And I think you're going to see some fans come out because you got a new coach. Everybody wants to see the new coach. So I anticipate we're going to be off to a good start. We have a good uh, preseason leading into the conference. I think we'll continue to have the fan base we've had. Well, we do. One of the things that we looked at, as I said earlier, was not only their coaching philosophy, their orientation of student athletes, but their philosophy about community involvement, uh, knowing people, working with people. Uh, he has all the right philosophy. We checked out all the things he did at Valdosta in terms of connections. Uh, we believe he's going to be a great community asset. 
Well, that, that's that's exactly part of our plans. You know, you've got to win to get to some games where you can bring some, uh, if you will, Division One opponents. In fact, our conference is reducing the number of non-Division One teams that you can schedule. That puts a responsibility on all of us to increase the quality of our schedule. So we want to bring good competitive teams here to Southeastern to play. Uh, we think it also increases fan interest. They want to see our team, but they want to see other teams. That's part of our plan. Oh, I don't know. I'd be a little remiss to put uh, too much pressure on. Let's just say that I think we'll be in the conference tournament, and I believe if injuries work out, we have a great shot at being back in the NCAA. I think the goals will, you know, be twofold. I think first to maintain what's been established, a great foundation at uh, Southeastern Louisiana. Defense first, understanding how to play unselfishly and together. I think that's been done here over the last couple of seasons. They've had success with that. And, of course, although I may do it a little differently, it's going to be the same goal, end goal. And I think to avoid complacency. Uh, you know, we're going to be everybody's big game now, and uh, you establish that when you win season after season. And so we need to come out with a very fresh, tough perspective every single evening if we're going to you know, have a chance to win on, on a given night. I think we have to be very thoughtful with any changes that we make. Uh, you know, like I said, this, they've been successful. You don't want to mess with that too much. On the other hand, I want to make sure that I have a, a staff that's comfortable. I think it's important in the very first season to have as very few distractions as possible. So try to find the strongest staff that will help the kids on and off the court, that will be there to work hard, have a lot of energy. But, you know, I, I have to be very, very thoughtful about, you know, who we may keep and, and, and retain. But certainly I'm very inclined to do so. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a locale. It's a great locale, you know, near a very diverse metropolitan area, New Orleans, and it's in the south where the, the weather's warm, and it's near other population areas where you can go and find young people. You know, being in a remote uh, kind of locale sometimes is very difficult to get to kids or even get them to, to want to stay where, you know, your, your school's so remote that, that no one really wants to go there or you can retain them. But here there's a lot to do. Uh, hopefully it's not too much of a distraction, but there are a lot of young people to get to, a lot of young men to go recruit, and uh, certainly I, I love the potential and the possibilities, and, and Coach Kennedy kind of proved that it can be done. I think you want to see a university that's growing. I think you want to see a place that's vibrant and has a, uh, a college feel. There's an energy on campus. I think when a student athlete steps on your campus and they see that and they see a first-class situation, the locker rooms or the new dorms or the facility they're going to play in, I, I think that they feel pretty comfortable and they feel like they have a chance. And then if you can show them that there's a very good formula for success, I think you've got a chance. I think as you win, people want to be a part of that and they want to be on that bandwagon. I think in, in making a personal touch, I think it's about relationships, you know, getting out to the student groups on campus as much as we possibly can. And I think there'll be some people who will help me, like Brad O'Hara, who will help me plug into some groups. And uh, I'll look forward to doing that. And, and then, you know, being in the community as well, making as many appearances as possible, blabbing on the radio, uh, you know, letting people know that we're here, we've got a lot of energy, we want them to be a part of this. So I think all of those things will help, but, but winning is probably the most important. You know, you, you never know how the journey is going to end up. Injuries or graduation or any number of things can, can alter your plan. So I think as a coach you need to maintain a little bit of flexibility. Um, certainly this team has some, some weapons. Um, I think we need to find out what our strengths are going to be, define roles, you know, but I, 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 you know, whether we can go inside as much, or I think only time will tell. We get into individual workout in the fall and get into early practices, I think we'll see, but I think we'll be able to tell pretty clearly. Are we a guard-oriented team? Or are we, do we have the balance to go inside and out? I, I, you know, I know that Nate Lofton was a big piece of that puzzle, so, you know, we may look for other, other ways to score, but we'll, we'll find it. Well, you know, I know this year we've got Ole Miss, Mississippi State, and Auburn on the schedule. I hope that we can get some other mid-major schools to start doing the home-and-home -home thing. I'm, I think we'll find that if you can continue to win near 20 games or more per year, I think it's, people are going to maybe be less likely to want to play you. Um, but, you know, I, I think it'll be easy. We're in a very fertile ground for SEC schools and, you know, going into Texas and doing some of the, the Big Ten maybe. There are plenty of schools that, you know, hopefully will give us the opportunity and, uh, you know, maybe, who knows, maybe we can want to give a night, maybe they'll fall in the line and we'll be able to play with them too. Well, I think we're going to uh, 
under promise and over produce. That'll be my prediction. I think I think we'll just uh, we'll play it safe. You know, you, you can't look into a, ma a crystal ball and, and predict magically what's going to happen. You just can't. You just don't know what the you know the season holds. It could be injuries. It could be any number of things. But certainly, I feel very upbeat about what's returning. I think the immediate goal is going to be make sure everybody feels good and trusting of what's where the direction of the program is. If we can start that now, I think it'll bode well for us in the months ahead. I, I think we. I, I think it's hard to be the underdog in conference play, mm -hmm. but I think if you can get on a neutral side, or if you have to go.